Qatar. Reporter Laura Emmett there will to discuss just what might be uh, the main agenda behind all the security and closed doors there. And now joined by Tony Gosling. He's an investigative journalist live in Bristol in the UK. Uh, Tony, we, we've had a bit of a background um, picture of what these people are, who they are, what, what the group is made up of. But why is it that uh, when it comes to this group that wild conspiracy theories abound? Why do you think they attract this reaction from people? Well, Bill, I think it's pretty obvious to me that this is a, uh, the con most convenient way to distract attention, to say, to sort of mix up this very important meeting with other silly kind of spurious conspiracy theories. I can tell you my blood is boiling at the lack of coverage in the Western world. If you had all of the leaders of the main banks in the West, all of these royalty, all of the chief executives, as well as people like George Osborne with his Treasury team there, uh, I mean, we're talking about an incredibly important meeting. Uh, you know, even if one of these groups were to meet up together, it would be on our headlines. But since they're all in the same place, you would expect more coverage. I mean, even but, but, but Charlie Skelton from The Guardian, sorry, sorry who's quick, down there. Yes, yeah, sorry to quickly ask you, but isn't that the choice of the group? They want a media blackout so they can discuss openly and honestly amongst themselves without being uh, reported erroneously or whatever. They, they don't want the media to be there. Is that right? Well, they don't want the media. That's because I think what they're, what they're up to in there is absolutely is no good. We have to look at what NATO is up to. And this is very important to understand the very close links between NATO and the Bilderbergs. It was set up round about the same time as NATO, just after the Second World War, uh, by the CIA and the Council on Foreign Relations, who've been talking about this during and after World War II. Uh, the person that actually got this organisation started was uh, himself, that is Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, a former SS officer. And the idea that this organisation is not important, not important enough for us to know about in this country, is just ridiculous around the Western world. Because what's happening here is we are spending our years voting in local and general elections, and this arrogant bunch are choosing our party leaders. So it almost doesn't matter which way we vote, we still find that this secret artificial consensus, which is cooked up at these Bilderberg meetings, spreads out around the world. And it's not just me saying that. This is Will Hutton, uh, who actually went to one of the these meetings when he was still the editor of the Observer newspaper here in Britain. That's his assessment, is that the consensus that they decide at Bilderberg forms the backdrop against which worldwide, actually mainly Western policy is made, certainly uh, countries in the NATO zone. So uh, can you be a bit more tangible? Are other ideas that they could be discussing then uh, over the next four days? Um, what are the subject areas? You're talking about policy there, but, but what else? Well, they will definitely be looking at, at the developments from the Arab Spring. Um, and also, one of the key things that they do, subtly, kind of behind the scenes, is they bring on people they think may be on their program, their idea of economics, their idea of global strategy. Uh, and they, what they do is they see if these politicians, up-and-coming politicians, are the ones that they want to be party leaders in the future. I mean, even people like the Secretary General of NATO is chosen there. But as for what exactly they're talking about, clearly Clearly they will be looking at the euro. The euro has been a disaster. And one of the things that irritates me is that they are asking us, as you just said, uh, to trust them. I don't think we can trust them. Look at the financial mess they've made in the whole, across the whole of the Western world. And also, look at the way that NATO is now tearing up the UN Charter. Now, the UN Charter is not just any old document. This is the main piece of international law, which was put together at the end of the Second World War. Uh, so they can't just tear this up and go into... Uh, countries just, uh, like Libya with impunity. Just, just very quickly, um, the G8 is uh, accused of being an elite organisation and not achieving very much. I mean, is there a lot of difference between this sort of group and the G8? And does actually the Bilderberg group really achieve anything? You suggest that they do, but it's just yet another round of talks and people enjoying themselves in luxury surroundings, is it? Don't they, do they actually well, achieve something? Well, they, they, what they do achieve, if you can call it achievement, is things like the Iraq War. The most, one of the most important um, leaks that came out of the 2002 Bilderberg Conference is that there was a consensus within there to start a war uh, on Iraq. Now, that's all proven to be a complete disaster. Uh, so I wouldn't call what is they're doing really, in there achieving is there, anything. Is, is there really concrete evidence to suggest that, that, that they will set an agenda like that to create a war? Is that, is that, if it's, this all ha is happening behind closed doors and under secrecy, how can you as a journalist be sure 
sure that that sort of thing is uh, discussed there and decided on. Well, I've just explained to you, I've just explained to you the leaks that were coming out in 2002 were about this, when most people in the rest of the world were thinking that that's a ridiculous idea. The other thing is that former members uh, of that uh, organisation, the Bilderbergs, have said, for example, that the initial meetings of the European Union were cooked up inside. So these are big thinkers, yeah? These people are thinking very, very long term. As I said, in the Second World War, this was brewed up, and it, only the first meeting took place in 1954. So these are big, worldwide strategic thinkers. But it is actually, I mean, people talk about the conspiracies to do with a kind of new world order, a world government. Actually, thankfully, these people are just in the NATO zone. They may have big ideas about a world fascist super state. That's not impossible. But the fact is, I don't think that's going to happen. If anything, it's more likely to be war. You know, okay. that's, and that's the way things seem to be going right now, well, because we've got the financial crisis and also an increased, increased problems in the Middle East particularly. All right. And in Pakistan, of course, as well, and, and Afghanistan, where NATO are. Tony, very interesting to hear what you have to say. Uh, sadly, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us live there from Bristol in the UK. Thanks. Tony Gosling there. OK, thanks, Bill.